how awful. You're making noises. I'm getting cozy. Okay, that's fine. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the How Awful podcast. How awful, how awful. Another week, another day. I'm sleepy. No. I don't know. You just had chocolate. I had chocolate. That's we going to wake you up. We went to the beach. We did. There was salt water and wine and, and cheese and now I'm sleepy. Guys, mm. I'm Tanya Lee. I'm B. And guess who's here with us? Say Hi. Hello. <laughs> She's shy. Get closer. <laughs> I'm a little shy. That's MJ Savard, yeah. Mona. She is the artist behind our incredible logo. Thank you for all of your hard work. It's very true. We loved it. Was that hard to make? Yes, because very challenging because I've never done that before. Making a logo like that? Yeah, making a logo like that. And I liked it, actually. I did it on my uh, Procreate app. On my yeah, uh, iPad. Well, you nailed it. You did yeah, a great job. It was exactly how I pictured it because I wanted it to look like a cross stitch. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll actually get to sell merch. If we do, you can sell a cross stitch of the logo. Yeah. No, we were really impressed. Thank you yeah. so much. Mm, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So my mom's been in town for a couple days and we've been gallivanting. My mom and I really like doing museum tours. So we went around and we did... Some uh, we did the Natural History Museum and we did so uh, dead dinosaurs. We did. We saw a lot of dinosaur bones. We did the uh, Huntington Library, the Botanical Gardens there, which was really really beautiful. All COVID friendly. Yes, mom took lots of pictures. Yes. Um. So we. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been listening since the first episode, but if you have been listening since the first episode, uh, you got to hear my spoopy story about a house that I lived in with my family in St. Petersburg, Florida. And in St. Petersburg, Florida, my mother and I experienced something paranormal together. We need yes. to name her. Yeah, Is mom, she... what should we name her? Uh, green lady. <laughs> green lady. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna name her Dorothy. Um, <laughs> Dorothy. Yeah. yeah. I just decided. Okay. Uh, so I told my mom that I thought it could be really interesting to hear what happened from her perspective, because I'm telling it from a set, like six or seven year old's perspective. Yeah. Which I think is pretty unique in and of, in and of itself, mm -hmm. but also could be very imaginative because I remembered it from such a young age that I'd be curious to see if and how our stories align. Well, it, it all happened like very quickly, I think. <laughs> It, it happened a night where my husband was working out of town. So when he worked out of town, my daughter Tanya slept, slept with me on my bed because she was afraid of the dark a little bit. She didn't <laughs> want to be alone in her room. So That's, I just, That sounds on brand so yeah. I think we were also were both the same way in the sense where the minute dads were out of town, we just wanted to sleep with our moms. Yeah. We just wanted to she be wanted close to, to be our moms. Mama. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to have a slumber party. Yeah. Yes. So we were having a slumber party. Oh, yes. <laughs> So, but it was, you know, it just happened right in the middle of the night, you know, it, I felt something blowing my, in my face. That's what, that's what exactly woke me up because Ugh. I felt like a little wind in my face. And was it like breath or like a window I being open? I think it was her breath. Oh. And when I opened my eyes, she was leaning with her arms crossed, just staring at me. Like, leaning on the side of the bed, she means. She was like, leaning oh. on the side of the bed. Yeah. Oh, I thought she was over the bed. No, she was leaning like this. Like, she was leaning like... Like with her arms on the bed and like staring right at Right next to my face. And I screamed oh. the hell out of it, like, like so loud. Oh, no. And then when I screamed, I scared her away. And then Tanya woke up. And then we're all like... like it happened so fast. Mm -hmm. And then she flew. She flew from my side. And then she went around. And then... She flew where we were exactly. Our bed was like facing a wall, but on the right side, there was like a patio door. And then it was like a, a little hallway with a mirror with the where two the, sinks. Right, where the bathroom Like an was. open bathroom. Yeah. And yeah. Then she flew right in the mirror. Yeah, and I remember waking That's, up and seeing her, and you said, did you see that lady? That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. I you wanted she... to make sure you weren't crazy. <laughs> No, I just said, did you see that, Tanya? And she says, who's that lady? And I knew, like, right away, like, that that was not, like, mm -hmm. something I dreamt because she saw it. Right. And what's crazy to me, too, is, so this house in St. Petersburg was a rental. 
we only lived there for what, like a year, a year, or two? a year. And we became pretty friendly with a couple of our neighbors. Yes. Do you remember asking the neighbors? Yes. <laughs> well, I was actually telling them the, the following week, I said, uh, our neighbor, he was like, a, he was a very friendly guy across the street, Tommy. I, I said to him, I said, do you ever heard any stories of like, like a ghost flying around here? <laughs> You know, and he looked at me like very weird and he said, oh no, you saw her too. <gasps> and, I, and I knew she was not like, she went from house made to up. house. Like, it was not, we didn't, I didn't dream or anything like that. So then I knew it was like, it was true. He said, she's been like everywhere. She's been everywhere, like in many houses around the neighborhood. Like a lot of people saw her, but she's like very, like she, she's very curious. She doesn't talk. She doesn't do anything. She's just curious. And then I found out that many years before, this place where we live, you know, it was like a golf course, you know, but before that, it was like a very, like a country, and there was a, like a little pound there, and she drowned there. Oh. Didn't she, her husband drown her, or did she drown in her? Maybe I, I, I emphasize how, that in my head. Yeah, I don't know how she drowned, but she drowned. I don't oh know how gosh. it happened, but she drowned there. It'd be so interesting to, like research that I, I wouldn't even know where to begin I tried yeah honestly I did try and yeah, I couldn't so find anything when I was like I was telling Tanya don't tell that story to anybody at school because I thought that <laughs> you know they think she's crazy <laughs> I thought we we're all crazy but actually we we're not because we we're not the only one who saw you know right saw her so the next morning <laughs> I said to my mom mom who was that lady in our bedroom last night and she goes Oh, uh, that was an angel. That was your grandma. She was coming to say hello and tell you that she loves you. Same. I didn't want to scare you. I didn't want to. I no. didn't want you to have nightmares after that. No, of course not. And I totally bought it. I was yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> must have been an angel. Good, good talk. Okay, you're pretty gullible. Oh, yeah, I still am. You get you to believe pretty much anything. <laughs> I want to know what it was like for you when she had her imaginary friend. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. That was in one house, right? That was the only house that I had that imaginary friend in. In Hinsdale, when we used to live in Hinsdale. Mm. Um, it was in the house in Willowbrook. Off Kingery? Off Kingery in 83rd. Oh, yeah, it was in Willowbrook. I Across the street from Willowbrook. Yeah. You're right, it's Willowbrook. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, did you think it was a ghost that she was interacting with, or did you just think she had an imagination? Yeah. I just let it, I just let it, let her, you know, think that she was, she had a friend, but... Yeah. She always, always talked to me about her friend. And he, you said he never would come in the house? No, he did come in oh, the house. Okay. Because uh, I'd play, with, I'd be playing with him in my room. Mm -hmm. Or I'd be playing with him in the garage. There was one time he didn't want to come in the house. Okay. We were playing in the garage, and I tried to get him to come in the house, and he said, no, I don't want to come in the house. And I was like, okay, whatever, bro. And like, you know. Do you remember what he looked like? Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a little boy and he had on like old timey, like 1920s type clothes and he had a little paper boy hat on, like overalls, you know? Like the suspenders? Like the suspenders, yeah. yeah. Like not overalls, but they looked like overalls. Yeah, he had on like the... He didn't look dead. Uh, we need to investigate that. For the record. I know. I'm curious now to see. Well, you know, and it's very common where children see paranormal things yeah. in their home like it's very common that that's the person who sees the ghost as the kid yeah so that's but weird I, I never really like push you to say no. you know ask, mm -mm. asking you questions because i didn't want to scare you with that and i didn't want you to have nightmares about it <laughs> no. I, just, I just let it be well also i was a very imaginative kid yeah. so you were probably like yeah she has an imar imaginary friend right whatever no big deal because you had an imaginary friend too in in uh, Willow Springs, when we first moved in, you had one there too. In Willow Springs? Yes. Next when we me. first moved in, the first year. You did? I don't yes. remember them. I don't remember that. Yes. What were? His, what his name was I... Fred. Oh, that was probably because I was obsessed with Drop Dead Fred. Was that? You've never seen Drop Dead Fred? No. <gasps> yes. How have you never seen Drop Dead Fred? That's so mean. <laughs> it is. Yes. What is it? I think it, that that's what it was. Okay. If y'all have not seen Drop Dead Fred, get on that immediately. I need to what see what it's moving it? on. Drop Dead Fred is a movie about a woman uh -huh. who's like going through a crisis in her life and her imaginary friend from her childhood shows back up. Yeah. And like when they were kids, he used to get her into all this trouble. That's and definitely what it was then. You as an adult, I was told I was You wanted obsessed. a Fred. 
I was obsessed with this movie. Yes, because very I'm often I would, I would like prepare dinner and she, she said, oh, well, there's a seat for Fred too. Yeah, she's like, just being a weirdo. A, <laughs> she, she always had like a little space and said, okay, I saw I just played along. Yeah. She always wanted a sibling. I think she was just making one up every once in a while. Right, but I don't remember this one, no. so I must have just been playing a game. What is this? No, it's only renting. Yeah, drop dead Fred. Hold Who's on, in me. it? Oh, Phoebe Cates. Yeah, Phoebe Cates. That's it. She's Carrie good... Fisher. Oh yeah, Carrie Fisher was in it. What? Tim, Tim Matheson. Matheson. Wow. All right, we'll have to watch it. Yeah, that's. It's one of those movies. It's like super nostalgic for me. It was like that movie that I watched on repeat. That was um, <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> for me did you see that we watched that yes. movie the dead guy oh my gosh could very easily have been resolved in, within the first two minutes call 911 right and Bernie's taken care of but no let's play with the dead guy oh man let's play with the dead guy for two hours well anyway I was curious to hear your perspective on those stories which seems to kind of line up with mine mm -hmm. but there was a story that happened in Vegas yeah I can't remember the year but it was it was before I was born it was 1980. It must have been 1987. Yes, it was before you were born, and we're in Vegas, and again, I, I woke up in the middle of the night, we were sleeping in our hotel room, and I felt my hair being pulled behind my head, like, you know, someone would... Was like brushing your hair away? Brushing my hair away so on my face so it, they can see me better. Yeah. That's what woke me up. Yeah. And then I saw my mother-in-law. Yeah, my oh my gosh, mom. Jackie! So not to not to be not to be overly personal, but was this the trip that Tanya was conceived on? Uh, <laughs> because it, it might have been. Because if it was, it might have been. It, it might, might have been, been her grandma like letting you know, yeah. like she gave you Tanya that oh, trip. Oh yeah, that, she did it. That could be a big possibility, but she she just sat there, and I I remember. Her name was Jacqueline, but I always call her Jackie or Jack, you know. Mm -hmm. But then I was so startled, I said, oh my God, Jack. And then she just sat there in a the corner of the bed, like very, like, all dressed up in a pale yellow suit. And what her legs were crossed. And then she just, like, looked, looked at me very peacefully and a little smile. Like, uh, she was, like, happy to see, yeah. me, to see us. Yeah. And then she just disappeared, like. And then I went back to bed, and I didn't, I didn't make a big deal out of it. So the next morning, we're going out for breakfast, my husband and I, and then, you know, we order our breakfast and all, coffee and all, and then he says, he says, you know, I have, to, I have something to talk to you about. I said, what? Who's Jack? Oh, because you said, he thought you said another man's yes. name. And <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean, Jack? He said, well, you were talking in your sleep, and you said, Jack. I'm like, oh, and then I, I, I totally forgot about it. And then I remember that I saw, I said, well, as a matter of fact, I saw that I saw your mom last night. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and he like, was oh. like, what? Oh, my gosh. I told him the story and he was, you know, yeah, he was laughing, you know, but he said, yeah, that's my mom. Oh, wow. And Tanya looks like exactly like her grandma. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. So my uh, paternal grandparents passed away before I was born. Moosh, what are you doing? Really? Really? That's Bro. where you're gonna lounge? He's on so top cute. of your toilet? Okay. That's whatever. He's just he's ready to assist whenever we need him. He's, he's a, on call. He's a toilet monster. Mushi. Mushi. Focus. What are you doing? So my paternal grandparents passed away before I was born and uh, my grandfather was the first to pass. And when he passed away, uh, soon after, my uncle gave birth. Or <laughs> <laughs> my uncle's wife, not my uncle, my aunt, but my, but my dad's brother, yeah. so the son of the man who passed, had a son named Patrick, like not long after my grandfather passed away. And then a few years later, when my grandmother passed away, my mom got pregnant with me, and I was born. And so it's just kind of ironic yeah. that when the um, when the patriarchy passed away, yeah. a son was born, and when the matriarchy passed away, a daughter was born. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of find it very fascinating to me, and even more ironic, like you said, that I look exactly like my grandmother. Yeah. Or similar to at least. And look Pat like, looks like he could be your sibling more than your cousin. Yeah, and my cousin Patrick and I are basically like twins. Twins. We look very similar. Oh, we yeah. look like siblings. Yeah. But you look a lot like Jacqueline. 
Yeah. Yeah. Your face, your, the shape of your face. This is this is the first thing I I notices when you were born. When I look at you, oh my God, it's Jackie. Yeah, which is interesting. If that was the trip that I was conceived on, because the one thing I do know is what happened in Vegas was born on November sixth, nineteen eighty seven. Yes. <laughs> We say that every year on her birthday. We're like, what happened in Vegas? Turns thirty <laughs> four. What up? What up? Um, I mean, that's why we like Vegas so much. Maybe. <laughs> where I was created um so anyway it, that's okay I was created during a football game oh yeah you were halftime show oh! <laughs> I was I was I was a halftime show they wheeled the tv in so my dad could watch <laughs> so, oh. bad time <laughs> we, we gotta try again well as long as we bring the six, tv in six years of trying dad had, dad had dialed it in he was just like do what you gotta do <laughs> I'm gonna watch sports <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I should have been named Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's what I should have been named. Yeah, you should have. Oh my god! Oh uh, man! But yeah, that that one always kind of fascinated me, and I don't know. I never experienced anything at our house at Regency. Mm -mm. Although that neighborhood, yeah, as you know, very haunted. All the roads around it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever experience anything driving down Archer? Yes, almost. I would say ninety percent of the time I drive. In the corner of Conti Line and German Church. Right. Yes. Okay, so we literally covered this on the last. And episode. she hasn't listened to the episode, so no, yeah. listen to what she's about to say. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. So when I drive that corner, German Church and Conti Line, my radio, if it's on satellite new, uh, radio, it breaks like for a couple seconds. Right, so yeah. it goes like scratchy. It, yeah, it goes so, out. That's yeah. crazy. So we literally talked. So I'm just telling you this now. So on the last episode that we recorded, I said the same thing. Where I said, "Oh yeah, I remember those street corners because every time I would turn past them, my radio would start to get like really scratchy, mm -hmm. um, and it would get like yeah, it, w it would go out. Yeah, same yes. in my car. And like now that we have like Sirius XM radio, or like at the time when I was mm -hmm. in high school, I had Sirius XM radio or whatever it was. Same thing. It would just go dark. Mm -hmm. Instead of going scratchy, it would just go quiet. Yes. And it would turn off. It's true. <sighs> do you ever hear when you're in the office late and you're painting, do you ever hear a car stop on German Church Road and the door open and the trunk open? Like, do you ever hear those kind of sounds? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. There's, it, that's the main haunt on German Church Road. That little stretch where there's the creek. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, right yeah, before yeah. the chalet? Yes. By the way, tell her what that creek is called. Do you know what yeah. that creek is called on German Church Road? No. It's Devil's Creek. Oh my goodness. It's called yeah. Devil's Creek. And that's where two bodies were found in the 50s. Is two naked sisters were thrown overboard. Uh, it, they'd been murdered and thrown into the ditch. And a man saw them. He thought they were like, um, they were retail mannequins. like mannequins. Oh my goodness. And then he saw closer and they were girls. But one of the things that haunts German Church Road is a car, like a phantom car, will drive down the street, stop at that intersection, like right before that intersection. Yeah. You'll hear the door open. You'll hear like as if bodies are being thrown into the creek. You'll hear the trunk close and then you'll hear it peel out. And there were so many times when me and her would be playing The Sims in the office, and we'd hear that, and we'd like make jokes like "ah, car accident" or something like, whatever. Yeah. Like we gotta, we gotta see what the car crash was. Yeah. We didn't know that so that funny was that. that you mentioned that because I've heard it, and then I, I always like, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. I always, I'll stop whatever I'm doing and, and try I and look, look at the window, and then it's oh, they're gone. Yeah. So I don't see whatever. I don't see nothing. Yeah, you never see it. No. But sometimes it's headlights. So I don't know if you've ever seen headlights go past like that corner because there's that little section between Ava's house that you can see oh, like no. that intersection. I don't yeah. know if you've ever seen headlights go through that. But, I mean, in theory, yeah. though, we'd see headlights there all we'd the time. We'd see headlights there all the time, but that street is dead after like yeah. 12. It's true. Nobody drives that anymore. There's oh. also, um, if you drive down to Archer Avenue mm -hmm. and Willow Springs Road, There's that coffee house. That you went to see Becky oh, yeah. singing. Oh, yeah. I know exactly where it is. So Very haunted. I don't think we can get into too much because no. I think I want to save it. For Becky. For Becky to tell us. But that area is super 
super haunted. Their that whole road. Whole, that whole road is extremely haunted. Um, Becky has heard voices, has had things like move, move, open and close, doors open and close, all sorts of things. And Footsteps, I don't know if you've been there, right? Because you, yes. you went to go see Becky. Yes. It's kind of creepy it was creepy yeah. yeah to be honest with you i was a little um and it was during the, like like probably like five o'clock was still bright yeah mm -hmm. you know so, oh and then they know the floor cracks you know you go yeah. it's very it's narrow old. it's old yeah and i didn't have like i, I had like a eerie yeah. feeling mm -hmm. like, like it was weird right there's also um that irish pub you know that yeah. pub that was like right across from the Willowbrook Ballroom? Yeah. That always changed owners. It was always changing names and owners. It's because it's so haunted that people leave within four months of owning oh, it. Oh, wow. Who yeah. used to go there? Did dad go there? Mm. I think your dad might it's a, It was like a motorcycle bar. I highly doubt your dad would go there. <laughs> <laughs> My dad might. <laughs> but I've always oh, wanted to go have a drink. Is it behind the 7-Eleven? On the other side of the 7-Eleven. So it's across the street. There's so many places. There's also that, The Willowbrook like, Ballroom, which is burnt down. That's... Yeah. Got, Resurrection. That, right? that, yeah, that not only is haunted, but it has hometown lore tied right. to it. That whole road is considered the most haunted road in the United States. Yeah. That whole stretch. There's, like, a four-hour ghost tour that's just Archer Avenue. <laughs> I know. We want to take... Did we... Did, did she ever come with us? No. On any of our ghost it's tours? So funny. It's so funny because when we first me, uh, moved to uh, Willowbrook... Uh-huh. I mean, uh, Willow Will Springs. Springs, sorry. Your dad got lost a couple times right there. Yeah. And he couldn't find his way back. And he was like two blocks from where we live. Like, it's two blocks yeah. exactly. Yeah. And he would call me. He says, I'm lost. I said, well, where are you? He said, well, it says Willow Springs Road. I said, well, you're, you're, you're right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why he would get lost there. And that funny. wooded area... Uh -huh. that okay when you're going down Willow Springs Road you know the back entrance into our neighborhood yeah that wooded part yeah that if you you can there's like a path to walk yeah into there's a it. path to walk into it my you mom see? was telling me that when we were kids there was um a lot of talk of like witches meaning in that woods and they would talk about it all the time at church because they were like don't let your kids go in and go like exploring those woods there's people doing witchcraft in the woods yeah wild well i heard from my neighbors yeah i'm not gonna name any names but i no. heard from some of my neighbors that years ago willow springs was not that was a scary place to be here to be to live mm -hmm. it was not safe no it was considered when chicago like it was considered the part of chicago that made chicago lose its innocence that's what it was called i didn't know that yeah yeah Wild. Not a good area. And now it's no. like... <laughs> well, it's like Juliet. Hor it was a horrible area. when we, Even when we were kids, it was a really bad a area. And yeah. now it's like super gentrified. My mom oh, yeah. lives there. There's nothing wrong with it. It's yeah. beautiful. Now yeah. it's, it's just... It's so friendly. It's so mm -hmm. like... Right. And if you lived... If you walked in... If you stepped foot in this neighborhood, you'd be like, wow, suburbia. Wow. It is. Yeah, the, totally. name, of, the name of our... Where we grew up was called Willowshire Estates. I mean, yeah. <laughs> No one's getting shanked in Willowshire Estates. No. No. It's very safe. So safe. A lot of kids, a lot of puppies. Oh, so many. Flowers. Yeah. yeah. In the summer. Right. Well, which is it's why cute. you wanted to you wanted to live there yeah. because mm -hmm. when the they were sack. looking, yeah, when they were looking for a plot of land to build on, my mom said that she drove down that street and there was just children everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, "Oh, perfect. I have a nine-year-old. She needs friends. It's mm -hmm. a new yeah. part of town. We had just moved back from." Florida, yeah, yeah. Not too long before then, yeah. we had we had come back from Florida, so I think she was like, okay, she needs a place to settle and like make friends. And, yeah, you know, yeah. real friends, not imaginary ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. <laughs> you never had trouble making friends. No, I'm pretty friendly. You said that she had told you she had a story that you didn't know. Yeah, but it was uh, her friends. Oh, okay. I don't know if you have the information about your friend's no, story. I don't. I don't know. I didn't think so. We can call her in one of these times. Yeah, and she's, tell got, it. she's got a hell of a story. Her friend's <laughs> house had to be exercised. Whoa. Because it was not just a haunting. Yeah. It was like demonic haunting. Whoa. Whoa. In Blainville. Right. She didn't have one or two ghosts. She had thousands of ghosts. Oh, God. Oh, no. Yeah. In the I thousands. Think I no. think, here's my theory, and obviously we're not telling this whole story because we don't have all the details, mm -hmm. but this is just a teaser for when we do, but I think this house um, was sitting on some kind of portal, 
vortex. Like a vortex where um, spirits could come in and out of. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you believe in mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of stuff, which we always say it's way more fun to believe it than it is to not believe it. Yeah. yeah. But if it were something that was yeah. true, I, I think it would... I don't know the exact story, but she told me... But what she told me was pretty much, like, very specific. It was, like, mm -hmm. poltergeist-esque. Like, yeah. things opening and slamming. Yes. And, yes. like, things getting thrown across the room. It's kind of like my aunt's farmhouse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a lot like that. It's crazy. And, like, she had to have a priest come and exercise the place. It was a whole thing. Mm -hmm. A couple times. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's mad. That's crazy. It's wild. It's, like, uh, one of their friends that lives, like, yeah. in Park Lake. Okay. But she's the one I really like. Nancy? Yeah, yeah. Nancy. She's she's super sweet. Yeah, she's really funny. It's always fun to get talking to people and find out their... Because everybody's got some sort of crazy story. That's what I find really interesting yeah. about this yeah. stuff. Is everybody has a story. You yeah. start talking and people start telling you their yep. stories. I heard a lot about... In the stuff that I've listened to, whenever it's in Canada, there's a lot of murders involving like the gay community. That's yeah. what I hear the most of, mostly centered around Toronto, where I think there was like a stretch of time in the 80s, specifically, where they were disappearing and being found. There was like a specific serial killer that was targeting Wolf. the gay community. But you weren't in Toronto, you were further out. She was. She grew up in Montreal. Yeah, Montreal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Montreal, we, Quebec. You need to tell us about your how many times your dad died and then came back to life. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. My dad had a huge accident when he was in his mid twenties. Uh, well, no, maybe not mid twenties, like he early. Was like early twenties. Early twenties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had a motorcycle accident, and uh, his skull was split in two. His skull, yeah. And then they reattach it, and then they. He was in a newspaper. He was like. Yeah. They, they said uh, this man was uh, brought back to life. Well, what's crazy, so this is, so I always, if you guys have seen the movie Big Fish, if you haven't, please watch it. It's one of the best movies ever. Mm -hmm. But I used to always joke that my grandfather was like Big Fish. Mm -hmm. um, all of his stories were kind of wild in my eyes, and I kind of would always be like, yeah, yeah, okay, grandpa. Whatever, yeah. grandpa. Oh, yeah. But he told this story. Uh, he had a helmet on, and the helmet cracked. And mm -hmm. then his skull cracked Ugh. underneath the helmet. So it was like yeah. the helmet just shattered because <laughs> he landed on his head. Useless. Yeah. yeah, completely. I mean, this was also the late 50s. Oh, okay. So they weren't made very well. I don't know that they were made to, to withstand yeah, stuff like yeah. that. He probably would have died if it wasn't for his helmet, to mm -hmm. be honest. And but... yeah, he had his cousin with him. On his bike. She was riding oh, behind him. I didn't know that. Yeah. Did yeah. she get severely injured too? She was injured, but not nothing like my dad. She had scratches, but but he was the mostly... Yeah. He also had this huge scar from this accident that went diagonal across his face yeah. over his eye that made him lose most of his sight in one of his eyes. Right. So he had to wear glasses, mm -hmm. and the, gl the prescription had to be... Um, stronger on one side. Yeah, stronger on one side than the yeah. other because of that scar that he had across his face uh, but yeah supposedly the story goes is that he died in the hospital room and came back to like he was in a coma for like 40 yeah. days or something like that just like jesus has risen yes <laughs> there goes my grandpa after 40 days in a coma waking up um, didn't he also fall from something and like yeah. oh yeah i was there nails through his hands or I something i was there that happened in Edmonton. He, he went to work, he worked on construction, and he was on the third floor with my brother. And I, I, I didn't see it happen, but... Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. He uh, came back home with my brother, and my brother was in tears. He said, Dad just fell on his back, and nobody helped him. Oh wow! Like he had, like my brother had to help him up, and then they had to go to the hospital. Fortunately, he didn't, he didn't break anything. Yeah, that, he that's just had some crazy nails thing. through his hands. Yeah, right? he had yeah. nails in his hands. <laughs> but what was the one? Didn't you say he like woke up in the morgue because they thought he was like dead, dead? That was the, oh, that was the motorcycle accident. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, he left that part out. Like I, the I story forgot. that I remembered was that he was it, like bagged and tagged in the morgue. Yeah, I don't think he was bagged or tagged yet, okay. but he was, like, pr being processed. Okay. Like, about to, about to be like, put in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's so he weird, because like, I had a dream about that. 
Really? Like he was in a morgue. Yeah. And Weird. and then and I said, oh my God, he's not dead, because he 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 risen like he, yeah. He woke up. Happy Easter. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so you know what's weird is after he's he, not dead after all. After he passed away, so he passed away on my birthday, on my twentieth birthday, mm-hmm. and I had dreams for a long time that I was mistaken and he wasn't dead and he was still alive, which is weird that you say that you no, had a dream. I had the same dream. Yeah, I That's had a lot crazy. of weird dreams where he was present, and I remember thinking didn't you pass away? Yeah. And he was, and my mom was like, no, he's okay. He's doing all right. And I was like, how did I mess that one up in my head? You know, like I was like, yeah. I went to his funeral. Like what the hell? You know, I was totally confused in my dream state. Yeah. I was like, no, but he's sitting right here. He's with yeah. us. He's alive. He feels like somebody that would have hung around. I would have like shown himself to one of you because yeah. he was kind of goofy and yeah. he liked magic and playing tricks and he loved illusions. And yeah. Dreams are so weird because I had a similar dream that, I saw him, he was in a ladder, and he was going up, and he was looking at me, wave at me, and he was wearing his jeans, and it, like he usually wore, like his uh, yeah. plaid shirt, in red and black. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was very vivid. And then he was just going up the ladder. I don't know where it was going because it was the sky. And then well, he was well. just waving at me like with like a peaceful smile, not a wide smile. Yeah. yeah. Like that. He was just like waving at me like, I'm okay. Wow. So that was weird. Like... I had that dream a couple That's of years. That's actually really pretty. That's like yeah. a really like sweet yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm okay. Look where I'm going to heaven. Like things like that. Yeah. Well, I often hear, and I know you've had some of these mm-hmm. experiences as well. I often hear about people having dreams where they reunite with their loved ones mm-hmm. in their dreams, and they're very vivid. And sometimes they're able to have conversations with their loved ones in those dreams that um, are hard to debunk because. It's acknowledging things that are actually happening. Yeah. So it's kind of this weird, like, space in your head Mm -hmm. that maybe in your sleep you can travel places that... Yeah. I mean, the only way that I guess would I would debunk it is that it's more like what you wish, the conversations you wish you could have. Like, this is what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. This person's missing it. You wish, like, you could sit down and talk to them about what's going on. Yeah. So you dream it because you wish it was real. Because for you, it's always kind of been in the same spot. It's always in the same spot. It's just, it's this white room. There's nothing in there. Like, even the table and chairs are white. (laughs) And he just sits down with me and we talk about whatever's... It's typically when something kind of not great is going on. And I need his advice or or I wish he understood what was going on. And then I'll have those dreams where I get to talk to him about it and I get to hear his side of it right? and how he feels about it and how he thinks I should proceed with it. Does it always feel accurate to him? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, he's always exactly like himself, yeah. but just more open. That's wild. Yeah. Oh, did an assistant just pop into your lap? I have a visitor. She has an assistant. She, she's HR. She's checking to make sure that there's no complaints. Yeah. She's, she's being making... treated fairly. Izzy says, are you, uh, are you okay? Yeah, are your She's are your work best. conditions okay? I love Izzy. <laughs> She's my girl. Yeah, Izzy's a big mama's girl. I Any kind her. of mama. She doesn't oh, discriminate yeah. against the mama. No. She likes the mamas. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, as a listener of the How Awful podcast, you know that we like to talk about uh, something wonderful after we've discussed awful things. Yeah. Um, so we can go first to give you time to process a wonderful. I think we know what her wonderful um, is. I mean, my wonderful is pretty obvious. Yes. I'm getting quality time with my mom, which I haven't had in a while, thanks to COVID. So it, she hasn't been in Los Angeles in a, over a year. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been wonderful having her here. And mom and I really, really like to be nerds and we like to go to the museums. Oh, yeah. We just had like a really nice time nerding out. We walked a lot. <laughs> we were yeah. very sore. But I want to thank you for coming and spending time with me and having our little adventures together. I don't take them for granted. Oh, you're such a sweetheart, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... this is my, this is my how wonderful the same. Yeah, I, I think all of this ours is... is the same quality time yes. together. Yeah, got to see my baby <laughs> and my other baby girl. Yeah, here. we grew up together. Yes, so. She's... As she's another parent to me. Yes. I'm always happy to get time with her. And I haven't seen you in a year. You got you at least got to travel and see them for holidays. Yeah. Thanks to vaccines. Yeah, no. We got to spend time we together. We all got vaccinated, so yeah. we're 
And she's We're spoiled us. She's about. gotten us food. She's fed us. She made the best dinner ever last night. <laughs> it's another oh how God. wonderful. I love to do it though. It's I know. Nice. I love it. This yeah. this woman is like I wish she's good at everything. <laughs> she is. She's <laughs> like a master chef, an incredible painter. <laughs> God, stop it. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Just keep going. No, no, okay, keep going. If you guys like art and want to check out her work, uh, you should go on Instagram and go to MJ Savard, S A V A R D dot artist, um, and you can find her work there. And it's. And we'll post what uh, she's done for us. She's done some personal projects for us. Yeah, we'll take pictures of them. We'll that are our prized possessions. You, of Thank course. You. Pretty You're crazy. insanely <laughs> talented. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Anyway. We did it. We did it. You did it. Wasn't that hard when she no. started talking? No. Just I'm talking not. to us. I feel much better now. Easy's on my lap. Exactly. <laughs> HR. She's there to make HR. sure you're comfortable. Yes. <laughs> do you want to give them the spiel or do you want me to give them the oh, spiel? Oh, Lord. You do it. All right. You can find us at www.howawfulpodcast.com. You can also find us on all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We are at How Awful Podcast. We also have a TikTok where you can find us at How Awful Podcast. <laughs> you can also search for us on YouTube, How Awful Podcast. <laughs> well, what is it? I might have missed it. I think it's How Awful Podcast. Oh, okay. If you've missed it. Got it. Um, you can also join us on Patreon.com slash How Awful Podcast to become <laughs> a, your very own patron. You a can, patron. You can be a patron saint. No, you there's can only be one patron saint. Harry Styles. Yes. Um, but you can become a patron, and uh, we did set up a goal on Patreon uh, to pursue being able to record in haunted places like haunted hotels and mm -hmm. whatnot. So if you want to help us towards that goal, go check out patreon.com slash howawfulpodcast where you can donate to our cause. You can also email us at howawfulpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear your stories, mm -hmm. just as we've discussed tonight with my mom. You can tell us your own personal ghost stories, your own hometown lore, your... Were you murdered? Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a ghost? <laughs> if you have true crime story that uh, is connected to you in any way, we'd love to hear about it. If you were abducted by aliens, please, for the love of God, email me. I want to know. Yeah, please. Yeah, any kind of awful story... Just email us. You can also tell us your wonderfuls. We would love yeah. to hear your wonderfuls. We're not all about the awful stuff, guys. We like the wonderful stuff, too. We will celebrate your wonderfuls. Just please include your pronouns so we know how to address you. Yes, please. And please, at some point, in the, say, it's okay for us to read this, or it's not okay for us to read this. We would just like your written consent. Yeah, let us know if there's something that you want to tell us that you don't want to tell. Yeah, the world. The world, well, yeah. the listeners of How Awful. That's us. That's us. We, now, we have to ask her to do it. Can you say how awful in French? I've been Tanya Lee. I've been B. I've been Mona. And we've been... Quel horror. Ooh. 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 And I'm your lady. Why? Ooh. Because French. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean not French. And French you are my man. man. As always, we've been B and Tanya Lee. Our logo was created by MJ Savard. And our theme music courtesy of Nikki Lou.